John chapter 3, John chapter 3, a very familiar passage of scripture. As a matter of fact, we're going to quote it together. We cannot have Christmas without preaching from the book of John chapter 3 and verse 16. John chapter 3 and, and verse 16. Let's quote it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. One more time. Could we do that one more time? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. What a Savior. Father, we thank you for your word and the privilege that we have. I thank you, Lord, for these that got out tonight. I know there are several here among us that are sniffles and cold. And, but we've come together because we have a desire to hear your word and to be in your house. And I pray, Lord, that you'd anoint these lips of clay, that I would say that which you would have me to say, and I pray that you would anoint the ears to hear, and may the hearts receive. I pray, Lord, that we would uh, get our spiritual antennas in tune with what you have to say to us tonight from heaven. I pray, Lord, that we would leave here with a, with a nugget in our heart from the word of God that will sustain us and strengthen us and that'll keep us because we know we are not ignorant of the enemy and his devices and we know that we're in a battle for our souls and I pray Lord that we would yield to you tonight may we find the strength and the help and the hope that we need in the name of the Lord we pray and everybody said amen, amen. God bless you as you're seated I thought as I just saw Sister Teresa. She had texted me yesterday uh, some family member, just a prayer request. And uh, for uh, our son's family. And and uh, so I began to pray. You text me to pray. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray. So I began to pray. So I texted her back and I said, which hospital did he, did he go to? And she said, well, in McAllister, Oklahoma. Well, I went to school with Brother Brian Smith. Uh, he's a friend of mine. And uh, so I, as I began to continue to pray, I just said, um, I just text Brian. I said, hey, bud, I mean, I, I get this from time to time. You know, it's, it's funny. Um, I get calls from people in like Kentucky and, and uh, Louisiana hey, we got somebody down there in Texas, and could you just run over and see them? Where are they at? Well, they're down there in San Angelo. Uh, how far is that from you? You know, I said, we're not living in Kentucky. You know, it's not next door. This is, you know, that's a, that's a full day's trip down. Oh, I thought it was, you know. So I, I, I know what that's like. But I said, no, Brother Brian, if you go into the hospital or something. He said, I'm on my way out of town. We got a Christmas party tonight, a fellowship. But he said, I'm going to go when I get through that fellowship. I just feel like I need to go. And uh, I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about the situation. But I went in. Uh, he went in. And uh, he texted me and said, well, give me his name. I'm, I'm here at the hospital. So I texted him. And uh, he hadn't opened his eyes, hadn't done anything, hadn't responded. Brother Brian went in and started praying for him, and he opened his eyes and, and started uh, mumbling a little bit. And so they was very encouraged. And uh, this morning set up and ate breakfast. And, 
And uh, so uh, just, just, some, just some great things that happened. And the greatest thing about it is uh, the family now has a contact uh, with a church. Praise God. And a place where they can go and get help from the master. Now, that's why Christ came. That's why Christ came. Brother Brian was thanking me, and I was saying, don't thank me. Thank, thank the Lord. He's the, one that's, he's the one that's helped us. John chapter 3 and verse 16 tells us, for God, my, my, we could, we could take a whole month and just preach from this, this verse right here. For God, we could just start right there. And, uh, but he so loved the world. And, and um, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation and uh, you didn't see like there's any way possible it's going to happen. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm reminded, and this story just come to mind, um, when Ashley, when we moved here, Ashley and Amy was, I think, eight years old. And we'd live there in Missouri, and they loved being in the snow. And my dad, he, he loves to get out and play in the snow. Really, my dad played rough in the snow. He liked to roll you in the snow and throw snow in your face. And, and uh, uh, he just, that's just the way he was, and th- stuff it down your collar and, and that kind of, I mean, he just, you know, and, and just, he just liked to get out there and get in the with it program. Well, the girls was down here. And they got about 18 inches of snow in March. And he called us and said, man, I'd like for the girls to be here. And there's, there's about eight or nine years old. And I said, well, that, and they heard about it. So they started hollering, oh, Mimo, yeah, well. I said, but there ain't, there ain't no way, there ain't no way it's going to happen. And so a little bit later, Dad called back and said, well, how about we do... I said, Dad, they ain't, they've been in snow before, but they ain't been in this snow. They need to be in this snow. And, and so he was wanting me to, you know, drive down, bring them down. You bring them down, I'll bring them back. I said, I can't do that. I can't do that. Six hours down there, six hours back, it's 12 hours. I'm not going to drive down there. A little bit later, he called back. He said, how about this? I said, Dad, I got a meeting this afternoon. He said, how about this? He said, how about you meet me in McAllister? You drive two and a half hours. I'll drive two and a half hours. And I'd really like for you to do this because these girls need to see this snow. And he just kept on until I met him in McAllister. Because daddy had a way of just keeping on till he love made a way where there seemed to be no way. Love found a way. God so loved the world. Now I don't I don't want you we are so guilty of putting we are so guilty of putting uh, this off on somebody else. But God so loved Jada. God so loved Randy. I I mean, it has to become personal. God so loved Bobby. Huh? Melissa. God so loved us. Even in our blue striped pants. God so loved us. On our blue shirt. Yeah. What a. Until you've known the loving hand that reaches down to fallen man and lifts him up from out of sin, then you don't know what love is. But love found a way. See, there was no way. You ever heard no way? No way. No way. 
Sister Snow bought me a shirt one time for Easter to wear. I said, hey, no way. <laughs> Easter morning, she had laid it out with a tie on. I thought, boy, that looks pretty good. <laughs> no way. No way. There was no way for the glorious God to relate to fallen man. There was no way for companionship between God and man. There was no way to experience his grace and his glory and to feel his power. There was no way that he could forgive us of our sins. There was no way to escape the judgment that was due to us. There was no way for us to reach heaven. So love made a way at Christmas. He made a way. Somebody, we're going to play a little. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 through 13. First one to find that, stand up and read it. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 to 13. Read it, Brother Bobby. We was aliens. We was strangers. We was cast off. There was no way, no way, but he made a way. I I don't know. I'm, I kind of feel like that lady today that I'm fixing to tell you about her name is Sierra. And... Um, Every once in a while, and we get to do it a little more now since Audrey's gone to school, me and Mama just to get get to go out, just me and Mama. It's it's kind of nice, you know. And uh, so so today I said, hey, we gonna we we. I said, where are you gonna go? She said, I don't know. Why you got? I said, you know what? I've been kind of wanting some biscuits from Cracker Barrel. I said, what do you think about that? She said, Let, let's go to Cracker Barrel. So I went over there and we sat down. They put us at our table and we sat there. And they walked by us and we sat there and I nodded. And, and they walked by us and, and uh, I, we sat there. And I played tic-tac-toe. And uh, we both eventually just pulled out of home. She said, I'm fixing to go get somebody. I said, just, just, just sit right here. Just hold on. And this woman kept walking by us, and she's, uh, she's going to have a baby boy in January, January the 8th. January the 8th, he's supposed to be born. So she's great with child. And she was passing back and forth by us. And finally, she stopped, and she said, has anybody helped you? And I said, no. She said, well, this is not my table, but what do you want? So we told her. She was very good, brought everything to us. And so when we got through, when we got through, my bill was $20.11. So she laid it down there. And uh, so I said, now, Sierra, I'm going to ask you a question. Are you going to raise that baby in church? Are you going to raise him to know what Christmas means? Christ Oh, yeah, she told me about where she goes to church. And she said, now, where do you go to church? And so I told her, and I said, now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm, so I'm, I'm just going to give you a little something. So I just gave her, I gave her a $20 bill. She said, now, you shouldn't be doing that to an expecting woman right now in the middle. She started crying. She said, I'm all emotional. And she said, you don't have any idea. I said, yeah, I do. Because the Lord spoke to me to give you this 20. You know, we get so busy. Now I had plans for that 20. I was fixing to go to Home Depot and I had to put it on the credit card because that's my last. But I'm glad that I obeyed the Lord. Y'all ain't hearing me. We, We get so busy and caught up that we forget to share. Now, I'm going to tell you what's the fact. I walked out of there feeling, I mean, I don't even know I had to look down and make sure my shoes was touching the floor, you know, because anytime you go in there now and you see Sierra, she's going to say, I know that guy, hey, set him down over here. Don't put him at any other table because 
It ought to be that way with God's people. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We get so busy. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23 said, His name shall be called Emmanuel. He is God with us. Hallelujah. Love made a way to help us. See, we needed help. I said we needed help. We couldn't get there. We can't be what we need to be. You can't do what you need. You can go through all of the systems. You can go through Alcohol Anonymous. You can go through all of those. You can go through all the rehabilitation. But until the Creator reaches down and gets a hold, oh, I'm going to quit doing that. You'll never be able to quit doing it by yourself. But when the Master moves in, I said we needed help. We needed help with our sin. We needed help with our life. We need we needed help with our mental state. We needed help. And love found a way to bring us help. I was reading a story Judy Rogers told. She said her mother, her mother had came down with breast cancer. And they was coming up to Christmas time. And her father promised. He said he, he saw her. She was struggling to wash the dishes. And he promised her. He said, now mama... He said, I'm going to tell you right now in front of all the kids for Christmas, you're going, to get, you're going to get you a dishwasher. You've always wanted one. You ain't going to have to wash no more dishes. You're going to get you a dishwasher. She was all excited. They went down to the appliance place and they had looked at the dishwashers and they was trying to pick one out. But about three weeks before Christmas, they laid him off of his job. And Judy said she watched as her dad walked around in the house and he, and he wept and he prayed and he said, Lord, I, I need you to help us. And, and Lord, and he was trying to find and he found some other little things. to get. But, but Judy said, I was old enough as a young teenager that I knew there wasn't no way daddy was going to be able to buy us Christmas and be able to buy a dishwasher for mama that he had promised. He said, we are sitting there, we was Christmas Eve, we was getting ready to open our Christmas gifts and said, there, there was a card that was given to mama and mama opened it up and in the middle of that card she started crying and they said what is it and there was a note from daddy said I promised you a dishwasher and until the day I die I'll wash every dirty dish in this house I'm telling you <laughs> they, she said I seen him as he stood there with an apron a man who had never washed dishes before who hated dirty dishes but love made a way where there was no way because somebody needed help well let me tell you about a God in heaven who put on an apron of flesh because we needed to be washed from our sins and love made a way for us he came down and dwelt among us that's why he's Emmanuel God with us that's why he can walk into the hospital that's why he can walk into Cracker Barrel that's why because he's God with us. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And that's what Christmas is all about. Because love made a way to help us. Made a way to help us. She said she never saw her dad ever, ever go one time. Never saw her mother ever wash another dirty dish because dad had made a promise. Can I tell you that God made a promise and he sent us Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to wash it away. I'll take care of it. He rolled up his sleeves. He got in the dirt and he became flesh and dwelt among us when he saw our state. For unto you, for unto you, that's personal. For unto you is born this day. I, I've shared this story before, but I was reminded of it again, and I thought, well, I'm not going to share that. And then it came to me again, and I thought, well, I'll go ahead. Was living there in the Osho, and Ashley and Amy was about 18 months, and uh, they might have been a little younger than that, but they uh, they had um, 
they had this character trait that when one of them took the other one's toy or doll or whatever it was, they, they, uh, they would leave their teeth marks on each other. They'd bite. And Sister Snow was trying to clean the house, and they had bit each other. And they'd been fighting, and so she put them in the playpen. I'm sure it was all Ashley's fault, Amy. I'm sure it was, but they, she she put them. She had a gray coal. I mean, you you'd reach down in the bottom and you'd pull it, and the thing would fold up. And 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 I was over teaching at the school, and I came home, and she was down the hall. And she was vacuuming. Sister Snow's very good keeping the house clean. She's down there. She's vacuuming. And I come in, and they was, they was standing in the pen with their arms out hollering, out, out, daddy, out, 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 daddy, out. And I came in, and she heard the door, and I went to get one of them. I don't remember which one it was, but I went to get them, and she come down the hall and said, oh, no, you don't. She said, I've been here. I've been taking care of them. They've been fighting. They're staying in there. It's punishment. They're staying right in there. Don't you get them out. Don't you walk in here and be the hero. (laughs) Yes, ma'am. I went over and I sat down on the couch. Here's two girls looking at me. Daddy, out, out. I tried going down the hall. Daddy, out. I went into the kitchen where they couldn't see me. Daddy, out, out, out. I don't know if you know it or not, but one of them has a pretty good sized voice and she began to she began to holler. She began to holler and I couldn't handle it. And so what I did is as I went over there, and I'll never forget it, and I climbed over in the pen. And I sat down. Now at that time I weighed about 200 instead of a little over 200 like I do right now. So I made sure to stay on the center bar, not to break the bottom of it. But all of a sudden the vacuum cleaner cut off and she heard the kids playing. She heard the girls in their laughter. She heard them as I was playing with them. And law and order came down the hall. And she come around the corner and she looked. And there they was, smiling. Nothing had changed in the pen except dad had got in the pen. That's what Jesus did for us. That's what Christmas is. We were screaming, Lord, get us out. And God climbed in. And all of a sudden, the same like I can see that little old toy that you pulled in his legs roll around, a little old centipede. We're in there rolling him around. Because Christ came into our playpen, He came into our world. Unto you is born this day. And if he hasn't got into your world yet, he wants to get into your world today. Immediately. Life today. Born for you today. Now. He has come to help us. He's come to guide us. He's come to counsel us. He's come to provide for us. I was talking to a fellow the other day and he was mentioning, oh, uh, I can't think of his name now, but Jimmy Stewart. It's a wonderful life. He said, boy, if I just had Clarence. I just had Clarence here to watch out for me. I said, forget Clarence. I've got God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is watching out for us. God is moving for us. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful life when you have God himself. That's the thing I love about going to Israel. 
That's the thing I love about sitting at the garden tomb. That's the thing I love about standing on top of Mount Zion is because I see in walking down and up those steps, this right here, this really happened. This, this is not just some fairy tale. This is where it took place. And when I stand on the top of Mount Zion and I overlook the valley of Armageddon, I say this right in here somewhere is where his feet are going to touch. Hallelujah! This same Jesus, it's not just a fairy tale. I'm not talking to you about a red a man in a red suit and a big beard. I'm telling you about the Savior of the world who came and gave his life as a ransom for many, who is the hope of glory, who made a way to help us. Galatians somebody find Galatians chapter 4 Galatians chapter 4 verses 4 and 5 it really happened it really happened Galatians 4 stand and read it 4 and 5 okay Hallelujah. He came to help us. Galatians said we've been adopted into the family. Hallelujah. Love found a way not only to help us, but love found a way to bring us hope. Hope. I'm not talking about a flimsy hope. Oh, I hope I get a bottle of eternity Perfume. I'm not talking about, oh, I hope, you know, a kid, I hope I get a new bicycle. I'm not talking about a, I'm not talking about a flimsy hope, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought of something there, but I won't, I'll, I'll refrain. <clears throat> a hope that is stronger than death. A hope that is a deep confidence. He's my hope. Hebrews chapter 6. Somebody find Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. You got that for me, Dallin? Hebrews 6, 19 and 20. I said, He is my hope in this world. He's my lasting joy untold. He's my strength, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and and steadfast. I wish somebody had helped me in this place tonight. I'm talking to you about Christmas. Leave it up there, son. I'm not quite done yet. You could put it right back up there. He is my hope. What's the difference in this hope than any other hope? Because this hope is steadfast. This hope is an anchor of the soul. This is a hope that's not wishy-washy. This hope doesn't depend on what happens. This hope doesn't depend on whether I get my income tax check, whether I'm sick or whether I'm well. This hope doesn't depend on anything earthly. This hope is forever settled in heaven. This is a hope that fadeth not away. We have an anchor of the soul. Hallelujah. I don't know, Brother Mark, could tell us about being out in the water. There's nothing like in the middle of a storm that you anchor deep. Hallelujah. Because the winds may toss you. The winds may blow but when you have an anchor that holds I love that song Sister Tammy sings the anchor holds this ship may be battered I'm telling you we've been through some storms. I feel something in my spirit right now. I'm telling you God made a way love made a way to give us a hope I said a hope somebody needs to grab a hold of it tonight get your eyes off the fleshly. Get your eyes off of the temple Get your eyes off the things right here. It's not always going to be this way. I said there is a hope that we have which fadeth not away, which is sure and steadfast. What's that next verse say? You got verse 20. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made a high priest forever. Somebody say forever. Somebody say forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
forever and ever and ever. I have a hope. Love found a way to bring us help and love found a way to bring us a hope. Romans 15 and 13 said he's the God of hope. 1 Timothy 1 and 1 said he's the author of hope. 1 Peter 1 said he is the living hope. Who else is better qualified to handle my situation? Who else is invested more in me than anybody else? I'm telling you the living hope of glory. Christmas and Easter is a package deal together. He arose victorious. I have hope no matter what I face because he is my hope. He's my help. He's my hope. And love found a way to take us home. Love found a way to not only help us and be our hope, but love found a way to bring us home. See, there was no way for us to get home. Well, I'm thankful I'm not like so-and-so. You know, they're pretty messed up. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how, how blessed, how much you got. I'm telling, I, I, I mean, it'd be like me standing up there on the platform and you standing down here and let's say, let's jump and touch the moon. I'd say, well, I'm, I'm a lot better than they are because I'm, I'm, I'm way up there. But I'm still so far from the moon. I don't, I don't care how good you think. You, there's no way we could have ever reached God's heaven. But love found a way to bring us home. My mom and dad was over the dorm for a long time. And, and uh, Brother Caleb was taking that position. And I, I really, uh, when they first took the dorm position, I really struggled with it for a while because I'd call them. And, uh, I, you know, my dad answered the phone, hello, son, how you doing? Hey, hey, hey. Ha, ha, ha. I said, hold on, who are you talking to? You going to talk to me or you going to talk to them? I mean, he, I mean, is that way till about 11 o'clock at night? And then sometimes on the weekends, they'd be in there playing scum or something and, and all kinds of games and, and mom would be cooking for them and, and so I went down there one Christmas. We left and got down there. And he told me, of a, told me about a boy because he wasn't there. And I said, I said, uh, where's dad at? Mom said, he'll be back in just a minute. I said, well, where did he go? She said, he'll be back in just a minute. I mean, dad was always there to greet us when we got, when we got there. I said, well, what is it? She said, well, we had a boy who was in the dorm. And uh, his card broke down, and he didn't have the money to get it fixed. And so Dad took it down to Shan's Automotive, and he he worked on it, and he got it fixed for him. And then he didn't have no money to get gas in to get home, so Dad went down and got him money. Now, I know, I know where they be. I mean... I said, why don't his own parents give him some money? Why don't his own church give him some money? I mean, it, it, don't, don't look at me like that. I mean, I'm just, he said, well, his parents are not saved and they didn't appreciate him, didn't care for him coming to Bible school in the first place and said he's a good boy, got a lot of things going against him and said, besides we got, I said, you ain't got it to give. We ain't got, don't be telling, and mom got, you don't be telling me why. I mean, we, I ain't been in the house 10 minutes and we're there. But love will find a way to get you home. I said, love will find a way. And love found a way to get us home. You know, I, I, I think sometimes that, uh, that we got things all confused. 
It's so easy for us to get our affections set right here. This, this is not it. There's a heaven to gain. I'm headed home. Well, they made fun of me. That's okay. I don't belong here. I'm a pilgrim. I'm a stranger. I'm just passing through. Well, they, they, they don't understand at work. They're not supposed to understand. Their mind is totally different. Our affections are set on things above. We are headed home. And love found a way to make it home. We have the best of two worlds. I said, we have the best of two worlds. I get to rejoice in the Savior right here and right now in the presence of the Lord, but I also am headed to a celestial city in that city where the Lamb is the light. And God made a way for me to get home through Christmas. Through Christmas. Now, I didn't know, Sister Dacia was going to say she was ready to be through with Christmas. But it's easy for us to get caught up in it. And while I was sitting there this afternoon at lunch, and I reached out and gave that to Sierra. I said, I'm going to be praying for you. And God's going to bless you and help you this Christmas. I want the musicians to come and help me. Love. For God so loved, for God so loved me. He looked down in time and saw Patsy Newell. That he gave. God sent his son, laid him in a manger to help us, to bring us hope, and to bring us to heaven, to bring us home. I was talking to a fellow the other day. As a matter of fact, Brother Tim and I run into him the other day at a place again. The young man's about 21, got into a lot of trouble. His mother had called and he came, did some community service here at the church. And I tried to, I tried to talk to him and all he did is stand there and tell me what he didn't have and how bad he had it. I'm looking at a kid that's standing there and probably $140 tennis shoes and blue jeans with the bedazzles on them. It's probably, I don't know, uh, they, they, $75 just to look at them. <laughs> I went in Dillard's and seen a pair and I looked over at them and I went to touch them and I seen about a hundred and. $25. I thought, man, I can't even afford to touch them things. Take me over to them $19 Wranglers. He's sitting there and he's telling me all the stuff that he don't have. He's got on a black leather jacket and I could tell by the way. And then he pulls out his phone. I said, son, I'm going to tell you something. 
I've been to places around this world where I saw boys your age, young men, running a tire with a stick down the road laughing and playing. And thankful that they had an old wore out tire that had come off a truck so they could chase it up and down a dirt road in Tanzania. I watched them in Nigeria as they sat down. And they don't have anything like what you've got. And yet they're happy. Y'all ain't hearing me. We are spoiled. And we look around at the things that we wish we have. And the things that we wish we had. And sometimes misunderstanding over things we don't have. And we lose our hope. And once you lose your hope, you're in trouble. You need to grab a hold of that hope that is steadfast and sure that fadeth not away. That's an anchor for the soul. Love found a way. We're headed somewhere. I said, we're headed somewhere. Stand with me right now all over this house. (laughs) Spirit of God, speak to us. Jesus is trying to help you right now. I want everybody that will to step out, come to this altar. Stand in this altar and lift both hands toward heaven.